<clears throat> All right, so I should be live. Great. I'll wait for you guys to leave a message and let me know if you can hear me, if you can see the stuff that I'm doing. If anyone is watching, let me know, leave a message. See if anyone is watching. Nobody's watching because no one cares. Oh, yeah. Hi. All good. Okay. You can hear me. Fantastic. So today I just want to take the project that I've done. I posted a couple of days ago. If you guys were interested in me doing a small breakdown of how I created this little project. And so I'm going to go through all the techniques and things that I've done to create these, uh, this artwork that you see here. Now, very important for you to understand is that I had to rush the way I did this project. And so a lot of the things, if I go and display all the geometry, you will see that they are done in the best way possible, but they're not done the correct way. So, you know, let, let me just by starting by criticizing the way I've done this work. Okay. First of all, if you look at the final image, uh, where is it? So if I just open this, one thing that has been bothering me since I posted the video is that all these little stones are kind of scattered. They're randomly scattered, but they're scattered everywhere. And this is something that probably in nature you won't see. And that's because usually stones are everything in, in nature. It's either like in patches or and maybe this is a sort of like a general statement. But anyway, you can see that this is it, it doesn't look super realistic because the stones are scattered everywhere in the same proportion and I could have been going through the project and sort of like dividing the the scatter per sections so to have stones placed in a much more natural way another thing is that the sand it's not really in reality, you know, because of the wind and everything you would have patches of sand also on the stones and laying on like uh, these little elements, but again, you know, I was not, um, I had very little time to make this artwork, and so I did not spend a lot of time doing these things. Usually, if it's things like, you know, little patches of sand or water, I tend to paint those in post-production, but in this case, I did very little post-production. The only thing that I put was a little bit of a... Um, dust here and there and that's it but anyway okay so let's start really from scratch and let's see how i approached this project first of all the one thing that i did i opened the base model which is this bb8 that was done by this guy brian <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of people are from romania i can see Yes, there is a lot that I could have done better with the, uh, with the sand and everything. So I'm just going to open it. And this is the model that I got from, uh, from SketchUp. First of all, the way I organize my model, I tend to separate the geometry so that all the polygons are together so that I don't have to go and sort out the model in a different way. And in this case, it was very simple because it's only two objects. But usually what I do, I go to view and then I say I want to have a flat tree so that I can see all the object. In this case, I can simply select the two polygons, group them 
and then I'll go to flat three and I get rid of everything else that I don't need. So this is my group and I delete everything so that my group is organized and these are the only things that I have in the in my scene. And then what I'll do, I select the two polygons, I center the gizmo, make sure that the gizmo it's not rotated. In this case it is, you see 45 and minus 90. So I reset the gizmo also of the geometry. Then in this case, I actually group this in the wrong way. Now that the gizmo is centered, I regroup it. And now the gizmo is in the center of my geometry. Now I'll center this to the world. Whoops, control Z, L, there we go. And then I'll use the drop to floor to make sure that, that my uh, object is in the center. Another thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to drop, since this is a character, the gizmo of the group basically to the floor. So that if I have to make any modification or if I have to make any rotation, I have the right control point. And then each single element can be controlled separately. Great. Then the next thing that I'm going to do, first of all, I need to make sure that uh, Cinema 4D doesn't overtake the parameters from SketchUp. Because SketchUp very often people model in inches. That means that every time that I drop a geometry inside my uh, Cinema 4D file, the geometry will be scaled to the unit of this model. To do that, I simply have to drop a cube and see the size of the cube. As you can see, it comes in at 508. That means that the file has overtaken the measurements from SketchUp. Not a problem. Edit, copy, file, new project edit, paste. Now if I drop a box, you'll see it's 200 centimeters, that's correct. Let me see how tall this guy is. It's about 83 centimeters, I think it's fine. I'll leave it like this for now. Great. The next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to say uh, materials, edit, delete unused materials. In this case, all the materials are used. Since I work with Corona, um, in this case, it's, it doesn't matter because there is no texture in here. What I'll do, I'll simply start converting all the materials so to get the look that I want. Um, now, somebody has complained because I did not give the um, original materials with the models that I was giving and I was giving only the Corona material. The thing is that in Cinema 4D, in order for you to replace a material, all you have to do is create the material that you want to create and then with Alt, you can simply hover and replace the material with the old key pressed. And now I have a Corona material replacing the base material. This is all very simple. There isn't much to it. I'm not paying attention to the, to the chat because I'm trying to be concentrated on the project. Let's see, Fabio, thank you very much. Um, I don't know, I like Cinema 4D, so I cannot really say. Yes, it's, it's super simple, this software. But anyway, let's try, first of all, okay. The one thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that the materials look good. So I'm gonna change my render engine to Corona. Then I'm gonna say camera, I'm gonna look through the camera, right click, Corona tags, Corona camera. Then I'm gonna drop a Corona light in front of my model, more or less like this. There we go. I'm gonna hide it for now because I don't really need it. Don't need to see it, that's what I meant. And now the one thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that the materials which are most impor important uh, are going to be giving me this uh, photorealistic effect or that they are going to uh, behave the way that you would expect it. This is a robot made, made of metal, so I would expect that the metal material looks a little bit more like a metal. So just to break it down, let me just see if I select this element. 
okay this is not the tag I can simply select the tags of the materials and I can look for the material that I'm looking for so in this case the material that I'm looking for is the one applied to the material that I just created so in order for me to create a good material for this object all I have to do is double click on the material itself and then start adding the textures the way I would do it with uh, with any other uh, exercise that I've done here in the past so I'm just gonna go inside the all the assets that I have prepared and actually if you are familiar with my work and you've been watching my videos from a while ago I always use pretty much the same um, grunge and scratches for everything that I do there we go now this is supposed to be a white material so I'm just gonna mix this slightly something like nine percent that's already too much I think maybe four or five percent and I'm gonna use the same for the reflection there we go and then I'm gonna use the same material also for the glossiness but in this case I'm going to mix it uh, plugins corona with a color mix what this does it will basically mix this map that I've created with a color and this will allow me to control the glossiness a little bit better maybe I want this a little bit more glossy and the reflection maybe I also want to mix it with a darker color and I want this to go into multiply mode so that it's a little bit more evident now the same thing I'm gonna do for the bump I'm just gonna drop the same map inside the bump the bump it's going to be reduced to something like uh, 2% not too much um, and in this case since I know that this is the material that needs to be replaced I'm just gonna drop it here now I know that this as an object is round and probably a spherical mapping will work better but what I'll do here I'm just going to replace the spherical mapping because it never really works that good for me and if I had to go and unwrap this it will be a total nightmare with a cubic mapping I'm gonna, I'm gonna right click and say fit to object there we go and I'm also going to reset the position and then one thing that I can do in order to avoid seeing the seams in the diffuse I can simply say um, copy shader and then I will drop this inside a tree planner map paste shader I want to change this to be uh, less of a white multiply and have five or six percent there you go and when this is done I should not be able to see the seams anymore I could do the same exercise with the bump and the reflection but it's not necessary in this case because let's face it we're not gonna see this now I don't know if the light is too is too dark or is too strong but let's quickly render and let's see what happens uh, maybe I'll get a little bit closer and I also make my render output a little bit bigger and maybe also more square And let's do there we go <sighs> okay this is good enough as you can see the geometry is really not that good and this is also the reason why I decided then to hide it a little bit and maybe give it a little bit of motion blur but this is basically everything that I've done to make the geometry as you can tell from the final image it kind of works so you know um, I tend to be very lazy when I make my work and 
you know, Jake the other day was talking about how long it took him to uh, unwrap the material, uh, the, the, the geometry and how long it, it took him to make the material for the model that he was doing. And this is great, you know, it works great, but if you can have some tricks with which you can fake this stuff, it also works okay. Good. The next thing that I probably did that it's worth uh, talking about is this landscape. Let's get to it. It's very simple the way I did it. Let me get out of my camera. Let's hide it. For the landscape, all I did was taking a landscape model from Cinema 4D, scale it up, scale it up a lot, and then I sort of like made sure then my object was sort of like in the right position. Now it's very important when you do this exercise that you define the camera that you want to use. So in this case, I'm just gonna select the camera just like this one. There we go. I'm gonna right click and protect it. And then I'm going to modify the landscape because at this point it's irrelevant the way, um, it's still relevant the way the landscape looks, but I can change it because my view is decided. Let me change also the aspect ratio to something like uh, 16, nine, there we go. Good. Maybe I need to modify the camera again one more time. I don't really remember which length I use for my camera, probably something around 50 centimeters. This is a length that I like to, to work with usually. And one thing that I did was switching on the grid for the composition and kind of place my geometry, my focus of the geometry into this lower third element. As you can see here, if you run the lines, my geometry is placed more or less in the lower third on the right. And so let's do the same. I'm gonna block my camera. And then the, if the, the landscape doesn't really look the way that you want it, there are a couple of things that you can do. One of them is to try and change the randomization seed. In this case, one looks actually not that bad. And then I'm gonna try and align the geometry of this landscape with the one of my little kid here. There we go. So let's see what it's happening here. Is it touching the floor? Yes, that's perfect. Great. Now the landscape is a geometry and it's subdivided by 100 and 100 in uh, both directions, so U and V. Let me see if I change my display mode, if you can see it better, there we go. And so in order for me to have this effect, I will have to sculpt it. And so in order for me to sculpt this, I left to raise a little bit the subdivisions. I'm gonna try with 300 and 300 in this case. Uh, maybe I could do also 500 and 500. There we go. And now I'm gonna, since, you know, I'm, I don't need this to be changed later on, I'm just gonna convert it into a normal geometry, clicking the C key. Now, since I always try to optimize my scene as I go along, one thing that I'm going to do is try to get rid of all the geometry that I don't use because eventually just makes my viewport very heavy. And so with my object here selected and the camera visible, so the camera going in that direction, I'll simply go into point mode and I'll start delete all the elements that I don't see, like in this case, as you can see. This should be a little bit more of a clean cut. Yes, there it is. And I can also go 
You see, since there is a mountain, all the stuff at the back, you don't see it. I'm simply going to delete it. And I could actually do the same for these objects down there. Yes, you don't see them. And so that the geometry is a little bit lighter, right? There we go. Great. I'm going to hide my camera and then in the mesh, I'm going to pull out my brushes and with a pull brush, I'm going to select a size that it's more adapt to what I'm about to do. I can start sculpting on this geometry. Now the, the, the brush goes into uh, the Z direction, uh, sorry, Y direction app. In order to make it go into the other direction, all I have to do, I think it's click the control button. Yeah, there you go. Good. So there are a couple of things that I want to change. First of all, I want to have a steady stroke so that I know that my stroke will go straight. And also the pressure for now, probably 20 it's going to work, I don't know. The important thing is that I need to see what happened from my camera view when I sculpt this mesh. And so let me just change my camera here to perspective again. So that I can see what happened when I sculpt in that direction. Okay, as I was telling you, you know, the pressure, it's uh, a lot. I can change this to something like, I don't know, five. And then I can go back and change more if I need to. There we go. And I'm going to try and sculpt. There we go. Now, once I'm done doing this exercise, and actually, if, if you compare this to the one that I did, I remember that in my case, instead of going straight in that direction, I went a little bit in that direction. Let's try and do that the same. There we go. Yes, that's much better. Great. And then another thing that I can do now that I'm done with this is I can make my brush a little bit smaller and I can try and create that ridge that you basically see here. You see, so all these little bits of geometry that go up. There we go. Now the geometry could be a lot more dense and this could be a lot more precise. But it's okay. Now, since the geometry is all very wonky, one thing that you can do, you can drop this inside a subdivision surface and this will make it a lot softer. Uh, this is probably the thing that took me the longest for me to do. Let me change the display so that you see what I'm talking about. Because obviously, you know, this is not correct. And then one thing that I would do, I would go inside with a smooth brush, very low pressure. And I would try to smooth this geometry a little bit. Let me deactivate the subs the subdivision surface. And so this will become a lot better. Uh, but it took me a little bit of back and forth. And eventually, you know, you'll get there. But it's actually a very simple thing to do. And the more you practice this, uh, the better you get at it. Now, one thing that I was um, using the brushes also to do in the past when I was making furniture, for instance, was the all the um, the, um, you know, the seams of like a pillow or the, uh, the sewing of, um, say, um, yeah, couch or something, you know, a chair. Anyway, great. Now, 
the next thing that I want to show you is the way I made the sand. Now here I also had to play a little bit around with the material because I wanted to have, you see these little waves and so I had to play with a couple of materials, one inside the other. Uh, let me just open the actual project and see if I can copy the material itself so that you can see it. Okay, there we go. So as I was telling you, uh, this material is made with the uh, diffuse of the sand and then also like a bump and a displacement, but this displacement is a, uh, okay, let me just show it to you because it's probably easier. Let's start it from scratch. Okay, so I'll create a corona material, new material, call it sand, diffuse, load image, and there it is. This is my beach sand. Open. So I'm gonna create this material. No, I don't wanna save it. Then I'm gonna copy this material inside the reflection. Gonna mix it a little bit with a color, darker color. I don't want the reflection to be too strong. And I'm gonna make this also very glossy. Great. Then I'm going to give it a bump. The bump is going to be given by a, um, let me see, let me try to find a better sand. Um, maybe this one. No, I don't want to save it. And then the displacement instead it's going to be given to me by this other sand material. Let me look for it. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Bitmaps, sand. By this material. This one. As you can see, there are all these little uh, waves here. I'm gonna open it. No, I don't wanna save it. And of course here, we only wanna have a couple of centimeters of displacement, perfect. Then the what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this material and drop it onto the landscape and give it instead of a UV mapping, since I'm looking at it from the top, I'm gonna give it a simple flat mapping. I'm gonna look for my gizmo, it's over there. Rotate it 90 degrees. Let's say 90, there you go. Nope, 90. Perfect. Now, as you can see here from this picture, I'm getting a lot of repetitions. Maybe here you don't see it, but here you see it a little bit more. And in order for me to overcome this, I'm going to use in the diffuse, I'll copy this shader, and I'm going to replace this with this plugin called uh, Qtile, they have this pro soft patch that makes the material seamless. Past shader and that's it. And now I have no repetition anymore. Um, let me replace this light because I don't need it anymore. Let me put a Corona sky and a Corona sun. Now the Corona sun is too strong, so I'm gonna reduce this to 0 0.05. And also the sky, actually the sky I'm going to get rid of the corona tag, and I'm going to create a material like the blue that I've used here. This is a little bit post-produced. In this case, what I used, I used something like this, because I really wanted to have a blue sky. And I'm just gonna put this on the corona sky. Now let's see what happens if I 
actually render this. Corona Sun might be a little bit too weak, but it's okay, it doesn't matter. Let me rotate it in the right direction. Change this camera to the top camera. Great. Wait, I need to look at this from here. Where is it pointing? Corona Sun, Corona Sun, Corona Sun. Let me change the direction in this direction. Perfect. Good. And okay. I think that the, uh, the sky, it's actually too bright. And this is because the projection of the color, it's spherical. Sorry, uh, I did not mean to say bright. I meant to say uh, it's the, the the color it's leaking too much in the in the scene and the reason for that is that the uh, sky it's at the moment wrapped around the whole scene instead I have the chance to say to the projection of this material to be um, mapped frontally and so if I render this now it should be a little bit better and it should be and it should have less leakage in the image Hopefully, because you never know. So, I'll take a couple of seconds to see what you guys are talking about. More C4D tutorials. Uh, you know, the reason why I do these tutorials, it's not because I'm a great artist or something. But, you know, people always have questions about the images that I do. And so, you know, I do this just to show you... Um, how I do stuff. It's nothing like super advanced. I don't know what it's happening here, why the sky is still like this, but we'll fix it in a second. Hi guys. Hi Dujan. Hi Volodymyr. How are you? Uh, just a quick tip for the Q-tiles. Oh, we have Christian. Hi Christian. What's going on? You can layer it in the Q-tile process itself to get some color or grain variation in the sand. Yes. Actually, Christian, you and I should sit down and you should give me a couple of tutorials so that I can improv improve the way I um, the way I do this stuff, okay? But we need to talk about this another time. Okay, so what am I doing here? Uh, Corona Sky, why is this this color? Okay, let me see. What have I done here? Corona Sky, I made this. Uh, this is the material that I made. I only used the diffuse. What did I do here? Frontal, simple, coordinates. Um, I don't know, it's the same exact thing. And Corona Sun, what's the Corona Sun sides? Sides three, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's go back to this situation. Let's see why this is happening. So, 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 so. Let's make maybe this a little bit less. And actually, uh, okay, let's render and let's see what happens. Uh, 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 uh. Maybe I use the different Tone mapping, let's see. Minus one for the exposure, saturation minus 10. Ah, probably, I don't know. Yes, this is definitely less light leaking inside and I don't know why that is. If I close project, no, I don't wanna save it. Uh, sky, let's see if I change a little bit my tone mapping, if something changes, 
So the exposure, in this case, the exposure is actually too little. Saturation minus 0.10. I'm still getting this leakage of this color inside the, my scene. I don't know why that is. But anyway, I'll try to troubleshoot it later. It doesn't matter. Um, no, it does matter. Now it's bothering me and I cannot keep going. <laughs> uh, so, sky. Diffuse. Yeah, it's fine. What about the Corona Sun? I got the sides, intensity. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, include, exclude objects. What type of sky did I use? No, nothing. Yeah, I don't know, guys. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the sky for now because I don't wanna... Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna say Corona uh, sky. I'm gonna make this like 0.1. I'm gonna leave this sky for now, it doesn't matter. If I now render what happens, Now, let me change the exposure, minus one. Yeah, this looks a little bit better. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be, actually. But it's okay, we can get, uh, take care of the background later some other way. And let me also raise the contrast, maybe two, maybe three. Yeah, I like it. Good, so as you can see, I start to get all the, um, uh, what do you call them, displacement of the uh, dunes. Obviously the mapping in this case, it's a little bit too small, so I'm just gonna select the landscape itself. I select the gizmo. I'll put it up here so that I can see it a little bit better. And I'm gonna uh, scale it up maybe to these sides. And this will give me, hopefully, a better, more realistic uh, output now that I render. Yes, a little bit better, maybe it's too displaced, maybe a value of one would be a little bit better, but for now, this is okay, it's working, that's all that matters to me. I'm just gonna hide the subdivision surface. Now, the next thing that I did, I took my BB-8, which is this little guy here, BB-8. I rotated it because I wanted it to be a little bit more dynamic just gonna hide the sun and the sky also so that I have a cleaner viewport. And then I took the model of BB-8, this element here, the round one, I'm just gonna rename it a pans, which means the belly. And then the top, I'm going to call it a cava, the head, great. So I took the, the, the belly and what I did, I set a key frame at zero. Then I went to frame six. I give it a couple of spins, set another keyframe. Then I place my object on keyframe number three. And then in the Corona settings, I enabled in the, uh, pa, 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 where did I do it? In the general settings, is it? In the scene environment, camera, uh, uh, where did I do that? See, I'm such a pro. Yeah, motion blur, enable camera, enable objects. And now in theory, let me 
look at the shutter speed and everything shutter speed of my camera shutter speed is set to 30 that's very important because if you have a very fast shutter the shutter will be very fast when taking the picture and so you won't see the motion blur but in theory now if i let me disable the subdivision surface if i now render you should be able to see the belly moving and being uh, yes and now the the belly it's uh, like it has this effect of like uh, motion all right there we go so now if i render the whole thing you'll see Do, 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 do. Great. So now you'll see that I get this effect and the uh, and the whole thing it's moving perfect. Now I'll stop. For the tie fighter, I actually did the same thing. I created a very simple geometry. It was literally a cube with uh, a cylinder. This cylinder only had like six faces. Let me center the cylinder to the element R for rotate. Oops. 90 degrees. Squeeze it out. Make it a little bit bigger. T. Squeeze it out. Let me change my display to quick shadings so that I see what happens and then I turned it like 90 degrees in that direction I changed the um, height segments made it a little bit more slim C for the conversion and then I simply selected the top geometry the bottom geometry pushed it in a little bit then I took the eye, so to say, of the starfighter, of the TIE fighter, sorry. Then I made a copy, C to convert it, whoops, where is the other sphere? Let me make a copy, T to convert it. T to scale it, T, 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 there you go. Then I took this geometry, made a copy, R, 90, 180 degrees, moved it on the other side, and since this was going to be very far and nobody would see it, I left it low poly, because, you know, low poly works, yes it does. Select everything, uh, connect objects and delete. Then I select the geometry here. MW, MW to inset it. And uh, actually, let me create a Corona material, new material. We'll make it very dark with a reflection and some glossiness drop this onto the cylinder and then I'm gonna create a new material and this is going to be tie light light self illumination will make it red with an intensity of say five then I'm gonna select this loop So then now the geometry has sort of like a light ring. Now I'm gonna go and move my geometry in a position there we go. Now one thing that I've learned 
from you know watching tutorials and so on is that a lot is given in dynamics when you actually make objects not go through a straight line and so in this case since I know that in this composition the TIE fighter it's coming from that direction I'm going to try and bend it and make it a little bit more less of like straight and static all right then I make a couple of copies do the same thing there we go make another copy move it over there and change their position once again now I can take all these three TIE fighters group them and all I have to do is again set a keyframe for I'm gonna set a keyframe for their end position and then I'm gonna set a keyframe for their beginning position and so when we get to frame number three you should be able to have a little bit of motion blur also on the TIE fighters let me see if that works Oh yeah, Getar, I'm the, the laziest of all the artists out there. But you know, if it works, it works, right? Now, as you can see, these are too blurred and you cannot really recognize them. And also, bear in mind that later on I'm going to introduce also a little bit of blur uh, from the camera, like depth of field. And so you gotta be careful also with that because then it's going to really not make those objects readable and so in this case maybe the one thing that we want to do is reduce their um, travel their travel path so I'm just gonna get them closer and then on the frame number six I'm gonna get them also a little bit closer so when we get to frame number three the motion blur should be wildly reduced because of course we want them to be readable yeah we don't want to hi Mikael from the Philippines amazing nice to have you on the channel you know I have a lot of friends that work in the field of like uh, concept design and they all tell me the same thing we're very lazy and it's you know lazy probably is a negative word to use in this case when you have to produce a sketch which is supposed to give just an idea you know you want it to be good looking you want it to be effective and emotional and all that kind of stuff but you don't really have like two weeks to spend on it then these techniques are more than legit for us to 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 use you know and licit licit it's probably a better word and so as you can see now this is a little bit better you can understand a little bit better what we're dealing with um, in some cases I would also go and cheat a little bit like I would grab this one and scale it up a little bit so that it looks a little bit closer maybe that one will scale it down make it look like uh, it's a lot further away and then if you render it, uh, render it you Dujan, Qtile, yes, Qtile, let's say uh, it's this plugin, actually the guy that, one of the guys that work in the, um, in the making of this plugin is actually watching the video now, Christian, what's up my man, Christian, and I have to say, it really helps, as in, like, I can make super seamless textures in a second, it's, it's a lot more powerful than that, I use it in the lazy way, sorry guys, um, but it's a very powerful plugin and I really recommend it. Christian, how much does it cost? Because it's very cheap, isn't it? I sound like a car dealer now <laughs> that I'm trying to sell the, the, the plugin. But I'm gonna show you also other plugins that I use. Like one of them, it's Surface Spread. It's from another company. Uh, uh, I think the company is called Laubwerk. And it's like, uh, it's like a MoGraph cloner, but a lot more powerful. And the... the um, the viewport stays so light when I use it. Okay, so perfect. Great. 
So another thing that I wanted to show you, and this was one of the questions that I got from most of you guys, is how did I make the smoke that you can see here and here? So some of it, it's in done in the rendering, but I used a very lazy technique that I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, some of it, I did it in Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop, no matter how good your 3D skills are, I think that you always need to use Photoshop because the possibilities of like tweaking your work after you're done and trying to find emotions, try to find, uh, I don't know, different looks. It's a helpful way to try and communicate your work because like if you look at the, at the rendering that I did, the original one, If you look at the colors and the color palette that I've used, they were okay and they worked in the way that I did the image. But then in Photoshop, I had a chance to quickly change and try out different moods. So this is the, the original color palette that I went uh, with. And this is actually the, uh, whoops. Do, 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 do the final image that I ended up with. Because I thought that these colors were a little bit more, uh, I don't know, cinematic, if that makes any sense. Good. So the smoke, the way I did it, it was very simple. And you guys are going to laugh about this. I took a plane. People are gonna go on the internet and be like, Fabio is a cheat! Fabio is a cheat! He made the smoke on a plane! <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get in so much trouble. All the, the, the 3D police out there, Fabio uses JPEGs for smoke. Scandal in the field of 3D. Fabio Palvelli used the JPEG for the smoke. All right, let's call this Ovum, which in Napolitan means the smoke. And I'm going to use in the diffuse. I've already prepared these images. Where is it? Uh, desktop, uh, Fabio Arts and Farts, Textures, Smoke, Cloud Smoke. Now, I think I got this off the internet somewhere. It doesn't matter but you can paint them with your own uh, brushes in Photoshop. Great, so this is actually mapped in the other direction, it's okay. We can simply turn it around. Now it looks like, <laughs> looks like BB-8 just did an atomic fart. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm sorry, I laugh at my own jokes. Uh, good. So I'm just gonna leave this like this. There we go. And I'm gonna make it transparent. Uh, opacity, load image. That I made a transparency uh, image, which is basically a more contrasty version of the same smoke. It's very simple. Uh, the only thing is that I have to invert the colors because as you can see now it's transparent in the other direction. How do we do this? Simple. I go to uh, plugins, Corona, 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 uh, color correct. And then in the color correct, I have the possibility to invert the colors. And now the smoke looks like this. Now let's make a couple of tweaks to it. I'm going to render to see what happens and eventually one thing that you have to do is change the geometry in a way that it looks like it makes sense. So let's render, let's see what happens.
Corona don't have a scatter for Cinema 4D. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm probably the worst person that you should ask this question to, but I can look into this if you like. Anyway, and this is how it looks right now. Now, as you can tell, this is not that good. It's too strong, but it's okay. We can fix it. There are ways to fix it. I'm gonna stop the render. I'm gonna... Uh, the opacity, I'm going to layer. Where is the layer? Layer. There you go. I'm going to layer with a uh, color. And the color is going to be, so if the opacity is that color, it needs to be black, right? Yes. And then what I do, I tweak the amount of black on top of this image. So say 80%. Now, if I render this, you'll see that this is a lot more realistic. Ooh, Getar is getting aggressive. Christian, you have to make the version for uh, 3ds Max. And as you can tell now, the smoke, it's a little bit more realistic, meaning you'll see it a little bit better. But the thing that it's really going to sell this is because the, the smoke basically behaves as a, an element through which the light will bounce. And so the smoke, in order for it to be realistic, needs to be almost like a light, okay? Because it's going to generate light th uh, with the uh, light going through the smoke. If we understand that, all we need to do is take the diffuse and put it inside the self-illumination. Now, the self-illumination, let's try and leave it with uh, a multiplier 1, and let's see what happens. And this is a lot better. I don't know if you can tell from the from the from the video but this is a lot more realistic can you see it guys is it more visible i think it is more visible right and that's how this is done uh Boom! Fake smoke! Next week, all the Star Wars fan artworks that you're going to send me, they're all going to have fake smoke in them, right? Because I showed you how to do it. Isn't that amazing? Great. Good. Now, you're not going to believe this and you're going to laugh at this, but I also make my plans this way. <laughs> All right, let me just break it down to you because I realized that we've been going on for a while already. So let me just show you how I did the plants. The plants, as you can see, they're also like uh, 2D planes with the plants on it. There we go, with the transparency. With the only difference that in this case, you do not really need to have a... Uh, self-illuminating material just the plant works now in all the archivist work that I used to do um, all the plants in the background were usually 2d images the closer I was getting to the camera the more 3d models I would use but this stuff unless you know it but even if you know it you cannot tell and then if you play a little bit with the depth of field of the camera and everything you're simply not able to see that these are 2D images. You just need to be creative and you just need to uh, map them in a way that they are uh, directly directed to the, um, to the camera. And there is one way to do this even better if you have like geometries that give you a problem, which is, let me just do this in the other file because it's a little bit lighter. If I have a camera 
like this one and you see it I can actually put a plane into my geometry this plane has its normal uh, angle in that direction and in the plane I can say right click um, target is it target where is the target corona hair material render tag rigging tag do you see target target simulation uh, there was a tag that i could use before it was called ah target there it is target and then in the target i can put the, ca the camera inside and if i change the um, the orientation of the plane now this element will always look flat into the camera you see i can move it let me hide uh, my smoke so if i move this element around it will always look in the direction of the camera you see and so if I had to create a plan, say, over there, down there, I would just simply put a target um, tag inside and I would place the tree in the direction that I needed, you know, at the back of a building or something. So say that there, there is a stone and I'm putting a stone and I want to have something behind it. And I want it to look straight in front of me. I can simply put a target and the geometry will look in the direction of my camera. And let me see if there is anything else that I did not cover. This is a scatter, but the scatter, I wanna do a better job at uh, showing it to you. So I'm going to probably in the future revise this image and do a scatter the way I think it's a little bit better. Now, let me take the image that I've done in Photoshop. If you guys have any questions, uh, just tell me and I'll try to answer it, okay? Uh, 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 okay, file, open. So the final image that I finished up with was um, this one. And all I did to do a little bit of post-production in this image, sorry, let me put this down. I used a, um, a lot and a, um, a couple of strokes of like uh, smoke brushes. So the smoke brushes actually, they are from fog brushes from I think Brush Z. They're for free. You can go online and you can um, find them for free. I create a brand new layer. And then what I did with a white brush, I made a very low opacity stroke up there. Then maybe another stroke a little bit bigger down there. Then I changed my fog brush to have something maybe on a different layer because then I'm gonna change the opacities. There we go. And then with a another fog brush or maybe you can also use in this case a very simple soft brush just get rid of the hard edges so that it blends a little bit better i'll do the same on these other elements and those elements there we go maybe put uh, that one it's still too prominent i think then I put another layer for the elements here in the front. Maybe I'll change a little bit my brush, make it a little bit less visible. Also the ones on top. And then once I'm done, super simple, add a color lookup or LUT. Usually I like to work with uh, either the Kodak or the Fuji, but in this case, I'm just gonna go down and see if there is a look that I like.
in this case I think I used the Kodak no teal orange that's the one that I used I never put it 100% usually I try to keep it around 75 80% but this is really like your call I mean you have to decide how you like your image how you want it to look like and that's it anyway uh, Hi Vedat, very nice to see you man, it's been a while, huh? same to you and to your family man, stay safe, wash your hands and I hope that everything will be fine and soon we'll be able to give each other a huge hug. Maybe the next challenge could be a bit less tech related. Uh, guys, you know how many requests I got from uh, this, um, this challenge and other challenges? <laughs> So everybody wants something different. Let me try to let me try to navigate a little bit the situation and see what I can do, okay? But anyway, guys, this is everything that I wanted to share with you. I really hope that there is something that you've learned. If you did, I would appreciate if you uh, share this video so that more people can learn and join our community. And that's it. It's always fun to hang out. I wish you all well. I hope that you are healthy and that you're not too bored being inside all this time. I can tell you that I'm bored, but I have a dog and I can take the dog downstairs for a pee and that's one way for me to be connected with the world outside. But uh, anyway, I uh, <laughs> it's not a request, it's an expectation. Uh, you only use SketchUp and V-Ray. Yeah, but I guess that uh, there are some things that you can also implement in V-Ray, like uh, the, the way the materials are done and so on. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys and I will see you later. I'm going to be live with the guys that um, won the competition last uh, Sunday. So maybe you want to tune in and we can spend a little bit of time together later. Bye Dujan, bye everybody. See you guys in a, in a, in a few hours.